Hello and welcome to a video on what's new for Mad Pony Toolbag version 1.3. There has been quite a few updates and reworks, so let's get started. When you now press the logo, you get a link for video instructions for a playlist. I strongly recommend that you go through these, even if you're updating. The thickness button now can do negative and also positive thickness, and it has more range. You now have a new section for topology and geometry. Uh, first button we're looking at is edit topology. When you press it, you enter topology mode without leaving your subtool. Once you're done, you can press preview to check it out. And once you unpress it, edit topology, you can use zproject and you have new topology there. You also have the new topology switch. When you press it, you can start creating new topology on top of existing topology. And once you're happy with your preview, you unpress new topology and you have new topology. You can now create uh, curves from Z-spheres. Pressing this button will copy a curve from the existing Z-spheres. Then you can paste it in multiple subtools using the paste button here. So now I get a new curve here from my subtool and I can later on add IMM curves to it. We also have a Z-sphere to Geo button to create, create simple geometry in between Z-spheres as you can see here. This is in its early stages and cannot co deal with very complex constructions but if it is simple things it, it works really well. When you now select a view, view all grids is no longer automatically pressed and when you move the zoom slider now it will set your view automatically. You now have these two buttons scene focus which will focus on the scene and you also have the subtool focus that we had in the previous version. A new tab has been introduced under the view section, custom views, where you have a slider to select how many custom views you want to have. Then you can uh, set a custom view by clicking one of these buttons, custom view 1, custom view 2, and you can use these buttons to cycle between the views that you have, as well as setting new views. So if I now press next view, that sets my next view to the next currently available view, and now another one, and I can cycle through these four views, or I can add more views if I like. I can clear views, pressing the switches next to the views, as you can see there. Or I can clear just all views by pressing this button. Any settings files that you save with the current views, when you load that file, those views will be loaded as well, so that's a great thing to have. The Align system has totally been reworked. It's now view dependent. It has some new icons and offers a lot more flexibility than the previous system. It's very simple to use, as you can see. You can also use the, the buttons below to choose which edge of the current subtool gets aligned to the alignment driver. And you can now also align Z-spheres and you can align them by a Z-sphere align driver using selected Z-spheres, Z-spheres of the same polygroup or all Z-spheres. And you can use masking to mask out the ones that you do not want to align. And the system works exactly like the subtool system. A new transformation type has been added called View Nudge. This transformation type will allow you to nudge your view and you can position your view using these arrows to the left, right, etc. This is obviously not view dependent. Uh, you have the Nudge Pixel slider that determines how much. The, the center button will center it to the center of the canvas. You can also set X and Y position uh, by inputting numbers. You have the zoom in and zoom out buttons. And you also have a slider that will take you to a certain zoom. And you also have the amount that you want to zoom in and out. Then you also have the rotation, and rotation, this is like my Nudge plugin, Nudge Axis plugin, my free one. Here we also have Canvas Drag, and this is an emulation of Canvas Drag, and it's a lot more intuitive to use, and a lot simpler and easier to use than the original version. We also have a Subtool Focus, and Subtool Focus will rotate the view around the selected subtool.
for the subtools you now have three types of rotation you have local rotation you also have grid rotation like the previous version where you the subtool will rotate around the center of the grid and you have a new mode which is driver rotation and these will rotate a subtool or all subtools around the selected driver. And now for my favorite feature in this update, we have the Z-Sphere transformation type. And this allows you to control Z-Spheres in a programmatical way. This allows you to rotate Z-Spheres in any direction according to the view. This is also view dependent, like most transformation types here. This also respects symmetry. So as you can see here, XYZ symmetry is respected. And if you change the view, you can rotate in that direction as well. You can move a selected Z-sphere using these controls. These will also respect symmetry and masking. If a Z-sphere is off-grid, you can use the middle button to snap that Z-sphere to the center of to the closest grid position. You have the auto zoom button that will auto zoom according to the modifications that you make on your z-spheres. You can transform z-spheres by children. So if you select a, a z-sphere and you have children select, if you add or move z-spheres, now all the children from that z-sphere will move. You can also target polygroups. So if you select a z-sphere from one polygroup and you move it, all the z-spheres from the same polygroup will be transformed as well. This is true also for when you're adding z-spheres. Or you can simply select all z-spheres, mask the ones you don't want to move, and move the ones that are unmasked. You can delete z-spheres with this middle button here. And you can add z-spheres with or without symmetry. So you can create really complex shapes using this system and they'll all be snapped to the grid so they'll be very precise. You can also use the scale up and scale down buttons as well as the button in between that will set the scale to a certain grid unit that you have selected. You can use all the modes selected children and polygroup to do this. Now radial symmetry is not supported. If you try to add these spheres when radial symmetry is on uh, it will not do that. It will give you a message in the note bar. As we've seen before, we can use polygroups. So if we target polygroups and we turn off symmetry, radial symmetry, now we can work with the polygroups and we can add to all the z-spheres of the same polygroup or we can move them. We can uh, do any transformation. We have the preview option to preview adaptive skin. You can change individual parameters and see your skin change in, in a live preview mode. For wh when you make an adaptive skin, if the clean button, the clean switch is on, it will clear out the edges, the extra edges that you don't need, so it gives you a clean model. Also, it will create a subtool below the current subtool instead of creating a different tool. In preview mode, you can also transform these spheres. So you, if you have preview mode on and you start adding these spheres, you will see that change automatically. You can select a Z-Sphere parent or the Z-Sphere child using these arrows. So this way you don't need to come out of preview mode while you're doing your modifications. So as you can see, there's a lot you can do using this system and you can make really precise models. Finally, you have the toggle all uh, switch. And this is a bit like my free toggle all macro. The difference is that this switch actually respects what's visible and brings back only what's visible. As you can see here, while I toggle it using a hotkey, it only brings back what was previously visible. Now for anti-aliasing, uh, this is an easy way to turn on and off anti-aliasing just by a click of switch. And that's it for the new updates. If you would like to see more and how all these functions work, uh, check out the playlist in the description below.